Welcome to the Voice of Salvation programming, whose main source is to be an inspiration to you through the message of hope and peace. And this is only achieved when you remain in tune. Stay with us and you will be blessed. verse i just want to say a quick reminder we we talk about it often but we're so apt so prone to sing familiar words i just want to remind us of these words before we sing them so that we can sing them thoughtfully and purposefully this last verse says to the old rugged cross i will ever be true it's shame and reproach in this world it's shame and reproach i'll gladly bear then he'll call me someday this is what this is the reward to my home far away where his glory forever all share. Won't make sense to many around us down here on this side, but let's really purpose in our hearts as we're singing this and sing with intent to the Lord tonight on this last verse together now. To the old Chorus up a cappella with me. So I'll cherish. 
Beyond measure. To the secular world, the word blessed is characterized by happiness or good fortune, but we know clearly that these standards or definitions cannot fully apply to the true meaning of this word according to the Word of God. According to the book of Psalm 1, 1 and 3, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now we know that in this earth we experience four different seasons, such as spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Each of these different seasons has a purpose for the well-being of the earth. Without these seasons there would be a disorder on the face of this earth. This would thus result in critical conditions upon earth and all humanity. But here in Psalms chapter 1, man is compared to a tree with a deep meaning behind it. Each season plays an important role in the well-being of this place we call earth. For example, the role of spring upon this earth means rebirth and renewal and regrowth. Summer usually means that the day will be longer and the night will be shorter. And autumn means a time of change. You usually see colors such as yellow, red, and brown, and last, but not least, winter, which means that the days are shortest and the nights are longest. Now, each one of these seasons has something special to it, which in turn helps us to live a better life here on earth. But the psalmist describes something more beautiful in his words when he expressed the fact that we are blessed when we walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. The word walk is defined as a constant movement, with something or someone. So the psalmist goes straight to the point in verse 1, knowing that in order to declare that we are blessed by God and His Holy Word, there is a standard by which we are to live. Sometimes we tend to forget just how blessed we are when we see everything around us in the current situation in this world. You see, many of us would even say, how can we possibly declare that we are blessed with what is going on in the secular world and religious world around us? We must grab a hold of the promises of God, which he has declared unto us as it is written in his word in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. The church of God has been blessed by God, and she will continue to receive from those blessings only if she sticks to his word. We know and understand clearly by the scriptures that the gifts and the power was given to the church, and that Christ declared in His holy word that not even the very powers of hell would be able to overcome the program of God. Now God's program as we know it today is the last day's church of God. And that program of God is still in effect today, and the standard and requirements for her have not changed and will not change. The psalmist tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Before we continue, I want you to notice that the word scornful. Now, this word here has many definitions, but as I was looking for the various types of definitions, there was one that caught my attention. Using the word scornful as a verb, which would be scorn, which means to reject. Now the scripture is telling us that the blessed man who does not sit in the seat of the scornful, not only is he blessed, but blessed are those who do not reject this blessing. You see, the power and the gifts of the word were given to us for free. There was no price to pay for such blessings. It is mankind, however, who chooses whether to accept that blessing or not. I would rather be among those who are willing to accept this as the whole word of God and walk according to its standards 
in order to receive of this blessing which are contained in it. This is why the following words tells us, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That word, but, means something important here because the psalmist describes that the joy of that blessed man is in the law of the Lord. Now, as the church, our delight must be in the law of God, not in the law of bondage. The word of God and the message of Christ and his church bring power and authority to it. One of our older pioneers in the church who has gone on to glory once said that there was a power and authority in the message of the church. And I believe this to be true even more today. When we get in the mindset settled in in us that there should be no other delight in us than to follow and walk worthy in the law of the Lord, the holy word of God, then we will truly understand what it is to be blessed. You see, there must be nothing else in the church today that comes between us and the word of God. There must be nothing in this world that can pull us from receiving the blessings of God, and there must be nothing that can separate us from the love of God. The power and the gifts that God promised before the foundations of this world are in the church today, but God wants all of us to have a clear vision of His program in order for us to fully understand what it is to be blessed. The psalmist knew and understood that there was a joy in walking in the Word of God. Back during the time of World War II, the world at that time saw the rise of one of the worst armies in all of history, which we know as the Nazis. And their leader was a man who was feared by many, and their army was something no nation wanted to mess with. Their intentions were not good, and many times nations would surrender to them immediately. The reason this army was able to conquer nations was because all of them had the same purpose in mind. What am I trying to say today is that these men's actions caused them to conquer nations. The way they did it was not right in the sight of God. But what I want to tell you is that it is clear to us that we as the church today need to have all our membership on the same page and on the same program. What program? On the same program which has been laid out for us in the Word of God. Each of us should have the mindset that our delight will be in the Word of God. The way nations will come unto the church in the last days will be with all of us having the same vision of this program. The psalmist continues to say, And in his law doth he meditate day and night. This meant that there was a continuation of the law of God in the heart and mind of this man. We must be of the same mindset today. There must not be sleep to our minds and our hearts when it comes to the word of God. Just like we invest in other things, we must invest in our spiritual lives. The word meditate is defined as to empty the mind of thoughts or concentrate the mind on one thing in order to aid mental or spiritual development. You see, these words not only apply to one man, but they apply to us as a whole. There must be a continued meditation on the word of God daily. Now we come to the definition of a man as a tree. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. If you didn't know already, trees are an important part as to why we are living here on earth. Trees have various reasons for being here on earth. Just to name a few. Number one, trees clean the soil. Number two, trees clean the air. And number three, trees give us shade and protection from the burning sun. You see, there are many more reasons we can name, but just seeing these, we see the importance of trees. I wonder if the psalmist also knew the importance of this, as he begins to describe the blessed man as a tree that has been planted. I don't know about you, but I believe it is time we get planted in the ways of the Lord, in His Word, in His program. The Word tells us that he that does that which is required in the Word will be planted, but not just planted anywhere, no. When God is in control, he will place us in the right place and at the right time. The psalmist is moved by the Spirit of God to say that this man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Church of God, we have been planted already. God, before the foundations of this world, had in mind a called out people. He had in mind a remnant that would be established by the waters of everlasting life. Now that water is the word of God. So what is the psalmist saying? He is saying that we are blessed, and by living in his word, we will be established next to a source that gives us life. 
A tree needs water in order to grow and never die out. Just like this, the church in the last days needs that water. The problem is, have we been planted by the waters, or are we far from that flowing river of water? Then the psalmist says, That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Even if it may seem dry around us in this religious world of today, there is coming a season of abundant rain like we have never experienced before. A rain that will shake the foundations of this world. This reminds me of what the prophet Elijah told Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. The prophet knew something that no one else knew. There was no rain in sight, and history records that there had been a drought around those areas. There may have not been a cloud in sight, but as the Bible says, in his season, in his time. Things may not seem all 100% how we may want them to seem today, but the battle has already been won for you and for me. The battle for the church has already been won. The season is coming, and I believe it will be like Elijah, who was so close to God that he could hear the voice of the master telling him to tell the world to get up and eat and drink, for rain was on its way. The last day's church is in need of an abundance of rain like never before. It will be accomplished when we begin to worship him in spirit and in truth. We will truly be blessed in the church of God will fully be blessed when we put the following scripture into action. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. John 4, 23. God bless you.